My name is Chris Boris, the Ghost Doctor, and this time we're looking at my second ghost investigation of the Longwood Manor Remastered. This building may look harmless, but as we peel back the layers to the past, we find that many of the demonic undertones here are just the beginning. I'm definitely feeling something. My name is Chris Boris, and I'm the world's first ghost behaviorist. I've come up with a groundbreaking ghost classification system that brings ghostly contact to a whole new level. So you were involved in that crash, correct? My mission is to get to a spirit psyche and diagnose the problems plaguing them. He wants to kill somebody. Post-traumatic stresses, coping disorders, I've seen it all. I'm here to counsel the dead and the homeowners they haunt. The Longwood Manor in Macedonia, Ohio is a beautiful home built in the early 1900s. It was the residence of the city's first mayor, Colonel William Long. And in 2007, the manor underwent a complete restoration that began stirring up all sorts of paranormal activity. One worker saw an apparition of an old woman in one of the bathrooms. They also heard the voice of a young boy in the basement. Another worker had their flashlight batteries explode on them. And this was in addition to all the other numerous feelings of workers feeling like they're being watched while restoring the house. Once arriving, I couldn't wait to sink my teeth into this place because we were just fresh off our Mansfield Reformatory ghost hunt and we wanted a new place to investigate. Um, this is our workroom, which at one time was Mrs. Long's sitting room. Unfortunately, right from the get-go, the tour we got from the caretakers went completely awry. Now, is this the room where the uh, batteries exploded in? I suppose the touchy guys was to say anything. <laughs> All we wanted was some history and some facts on this place, and they were tight-lipped on everything. We could not get this info from them. It was coming up short, which is a telltale sign that there's something amiss right from the get-go when we got to the location. I don't know. I don't know if we told you not to tell us, but kind of yeah. we enjoy being yeah, because it gives us yeah. a chance to like maybe call them out. I'm not <laughs> The staff was odd, they acted weird, and they seemed to be plucked right out of an episode of The Twilight Zone. Despite this setback, we kept forging ahead by setting up a surveillance system throughout the house in hopes of pinpointing for ourselves where the activity was centralized in. Okay, yeah, I got the first camera on. Okay, it's coming in fine, I can see you guys. When you set up like that and you stir up the area, especially in older places, you're gonna get a lot of dust that's floating around. Probably just dust, but that was cool. That was not dust. <laughs> it's pretty cool, this big like blob of dust went past the screen, it looked like a big orb. And so when you think you've got something that's a really good find, but later on you can debunk with no evidence at all. The only location we knew of where they caught activity was the basement where they heard the boy's voice. So we headed there first. Is there a little boy down here? Are you the little boy that everybody has seen or heard down here? Can you tap on something to let us know if you're here? Can you make that ball move for us? After only spending five minutes in the basement, we caught this EVP. Do you want to play with that ball? Is there anybody in this area that wish to speak to us? If there's anybody down here, I would like you to touch me on the arm. Trying to build comfort with a young boy spirit can sometimes be tricky, so I quickly thought of the idea of singing him a children's song. Do you know your ABCs? Do you want to sing with us? Little did I realize that it would work so well. Sing with me. 
If you want to play, touch Jennifer on the arm. If you touch her, she'll play with you. I do feel a weird sensation in my right arm. Do you? Yes. Are you touching Jennifer's right arm? Can you do it again? Are you touching Jennifer? Oh man, all the hairs on my neck are standing up. Suddenly we caught this EVP. Hi. 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 Oh dude, I get goosebumps like majorly. Where's the EMF reader? This interaction then turned physical as cold spots began forming around the upper half of my body. My neck was tingly, the hairs were sticking up on the back of my neck. Unfortunately, as soon as we took out all our equipment to document this strange activity, it all came to a screeching halt. I'm definitely feeling something. I was, all the hairs on the back of my neck were standing up. Really? <laughs> that feeling went away. I was feeling a cold spot down here though, that was kind of weird. I think he liked us singing ABCs. Yeah. Is there anybody who's in this room that would like to speak with us? Is there a reason why you haven't moved on? Can you show us who you are? You all right? I'm just getting where I'm so tired now. So as the night progressed along, I got increasingly just violently sick. Now, what the reasoning for this was, we weren't sure why it just, I mean, because I was perfectly fine at the beginning of the investigation, but just either something in the environment could have perpetuated me getting extremely sick, but I went home and it got progressively worse and I was unable to uh, continue the investigation. In this area that wish to speak to us? Before leaving, I decided to pay the basement one last visit, and I was completely unprepared by what happened next. It's being a little cold right here. If there's anybody in the area, can you please touch my arm? Tender right there now. There, look, you can see a little blood thing. You see that right there? Yeah. It's like a pin was pricked in my arm. This was an unusual thing to happen because the first experience we had with the boy was very pleasant. Oh, dude, I'm getting goosebumps like majorly. But this experience has shifted into something more malevolent. Now, did you get hit? This was not the same behavior of the spirit that we interacted with before. This seemed like a darker presence that wanted us out of the basement. Who did that to John? He's hurt by that. But he wants you to do it again. <laughs> yes. Things progressively went to other individuals and one of the cameramen got pricked on the arm and was actually bleeding. Our thinking was that there's definitely at least two different spirits at the location, and one is most definitely a darker than the other. Can you prick me on the arm? All right, I think we're about done. Let's just shut it down. When it came to this Longwood Manor investigation, sadly, I had to walk away that night with more questions than answers. Who was this little boy? Why was he hanging out in this basement? What was this darker force? Why did it attack us? And could this have anything to do with the caretakers being so tight-lipped about this location? These questions burned in my mind so much 
I decided to return for a second night. And this time, I brought in two other people that I hope would help me solve this weird mystery. The first person is Billy, a spiritual sensitive. The second person is a direct descendant of the Longwood Manor's owner, Colonel Long. And the first place we headed into was the basement. Unfortunately, the spirits didn't interact with us here. But before leaving the area, I did decide to set up a camera to record anything that would happen in my absence. Now I want you to remember that this camera is running because in a couple minutes, I'm gonna show you that this simple action leads up to one of the most bizarre and shocking EVPs I've ever captured. Do you sense anything in this room? Right here. It does feel different than what it's felt before. Right here. Uh, right there. Right there. It's so sad. The feeling of despair and um, almost like an imprisoned area was so sorrowful. I couldn't bear to be in there. It was heartbreaking to me. Since Billy felt a sadness in this room, I decided to ask a few questions. Who's in this room right now? What happened in this room? Why are you in this room? Moments later, this haunting EVP was captured. Did something happen to you? Is this a woman calling out for help? Did something happen to you? This was an amazing EVP to capture. Not only did Billy feel a sadness in this room, but this EVP seems to back up the exact emotion she was feeling. Later in the evening, Billy was also able to help me find which one of the four bathrooms in the manor the apparition of the old lady appeared in. What do you feel in this room? When I first came in, it felt like an elderly woman. Did anyone die in here? So let's recap here. Billy felt that someone died in the bathroom. Then upstairs, she felt a sadness in the room where I caught an EVP of a woman calling for help. Then in the basement, there is a spirit of a ghost boy. Hi. And something else very sinister. Now all this evidence was painting a very disturbing picture, but that's not all, because what I'm about to reveal next will make you question things even further. Remember that camera I left recording in the basement? Well, that evening, the camera was recording for three hours straight. After going back down and pulling the camera away from the corner, I heard a response that doesn't even come close to anything I've ever heard on the 100 plus ghost hunting shows that have aired in the last decade. Is there anybody down here that'd like to speak to me? was what in God's name did I just capture here? Because this sound was unlike anything I've ever heard before. In fact, if I had to guess, I'd say that this sounds that it was made by something gremlin-like. And it only occurred in a way as it sounded like it was trying to lash out at me. The only thing I could picture that would make a sound like this is that gremlin thing found in that one Simpsons Halloween episode. Now I know there are all kinds of pipes running around the basement with a septic tank up against the wall. And at first I thought that this could be just a plumbing sound. But after submitting this audio clip to a few plumber websites, I couldn't find one person that could identify this sound. And what's even more mysterious was this camera had been running a total of five hours between both nights and this was the only time this sound occurred. And what's even more creepy about this audio clip is upon slowing it down and cleaning it up, it sounds like someone is uttering the words, I'm Jean. I'm 
Now I know that there are all kinds of weird critters running around in the afterlife that feed off things and tainted environments like this one. But what I find odd is that this thing doesn't really sound demonic, but it sounds like it came from a little gremlin-like creature. We still don't know what it is today, but it kind of has like a weird gremlin-like growl or weird, odd verbalization that we don't know what it is. So whether or not that was the negative force that we were feeling into place or something else, we still don't know to this day. The evidence collected at Longwood Manor caught me completely off guard, but it wasn't until I presented my evidence to Colonel Long's great nephew that things shook me to my very core. He ended up taking me aside and explained to me a few things about his uncle that are not publicly known. And it turns out that Colonel Long was actually into the occult and ritual magic. Now these practices will no doubt open doors to darker forces that I feel were experienced here. But then he went on to explain the more disturbing side of things that went on in this house. And it helped me to understand just how a young boy and a few distressed women could still be haunting this home. Now I won't go into the gory specifics here for obvious reasons, but just use your imagination on what could happen in these darker rituals to find the answers for yourself. This could have caused a bridge to the hell realm to bring something from over there into this place that is now roaming, haunting, and causing mischief or harm at this location. Unfortunately, the Longwood Manor has many layers of mysteries left to unlock. And since we uncovered this evidence, their preservation society quickly closed their doors to any further ghost hunts. Perhaps one day I'll be able to return and finally give help to the spirits here, since they seem to be so eager to be calling out for help.